open burnt offerings and sin offerings have thou not required then said I lo I come in the volume of the book it is written for me this I have read Psalms 41 through 7 blessed to the hearers of the word Amen. hallelujah <clears throat> father we thank you for this morning we thank you for your goodness we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your loving kindness Father, we thank you that your mercies are new every morning. And Father, we declare that today that we praise you for your faithfulness today. Father, we praise you for your goodness. Father, we praise you for giving us breath this morning. Father, we praise you, Lord. We honor your name today. Father, we even give you the glory for everything that is happening around us, God. Father, your word told us in your word that in all things we ought to give you thanks, oh God. So despite what may be going around, Father, despite what may be happening in the land, Father, despite what might be happening in our own lives today, Father, we give you thanks today, God. Because at the end of the day, Father, it could be worse, but today we give you praise for our circumstances, God. We give you praise for our trials. We give you praise for our tribulations. God, we give you praise for our sorrows father we give you praise oh god because if we take if we praise you god god you'll make everything all right today oh god so father we exchange a garment of heaviness and father we take on a garment of praise today father god in the name of jesus i praise you for the joy of the lord is our strength today lord and father i release joy to the airwaves god Father, I release praise to the airwaves today, God. Father, I release your loving kindness to the airwaves, oh God. Father, we thank you for your presence today, oh God. Father, we thank you that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, Lord. So, Father, we say, have your way in this temple, oh God. Have your way in this place, oh God. Have your way in the sanctuary, oh King. Have your way in the tabernacle, oh God. Father, look on our bishop this morning, God. Father, we ask that you touch him with the finger of love today, oh God. Father, we ask that you're anointed from the crown of his head, oh God, to the sole of his feet, God. Father, we praise you today, God. We glorify you today, oh God. For there's nobody like you in all the earth, oh God. There's nobody like you in all of the earth today, oh God. We praise you today, God. We love you today, oh God. We give your name to praise, oh God. Father, we praise your name, God. For you alone are worthy to be praised, God. Father, I ask that you visit every home today, Lord. I ask that you visit every home today, oh God. You will touch every family today, oh God. Every family that's watching today, Lord. Father, I pray, God, that you will send an anointing to that house, God. That you will send an anointing to that job, God. Father, I pray for everyone that is watching the replay today. Father, I pray that that same presence that we feel, God, that your presence will be felt in that place, God. Father, we thank you and we love you. And we give your name the praise. And we give your name the praise. And we give your name the praise. Come on, Zion. And we give your name the praise. Come on. And we give your name the praise. And we give your name the praise. Come on. We give your name the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on. Clap your hands and give them glory. Come on. Clap your hands and give them the honor. Come on, I day where you are in your home, you take a moment to give God the praise. Come on, you take a moment to give God the honor. Come on, you take a moment to give him what's due to him. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank him. Lord, we praise him. Lord, we honor you today, oh God. Lord, we worship you today, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want the glory of the Lord to rise in this place. We want the glory of the Lord to rise in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Come on. Everybody, we want to go. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let's do it again. Glory of the Lord, sing it. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the 
Let the glory of the Lord Let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King. Let it rise among us. Let it rise among us. Let it rise among us. Let it rise
praise you. We praise you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord. And we give glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. I love you. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord, let's 
lift it up one time. Say, I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. One more time. Say, I love you. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. And we give glory to God. 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 We get glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, give him glory right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We give glory to God. Come on, give Him glory. Come on, you give Him glory. Come on, in your circumstances, in your problems, come on, give glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to receive our morning hymn. Glory to His name. Hallelujah. Down at the cross, sing. Down at the cross, where my down where for cleansing. There to my heart, there. Singing glory. We're singing glory. We're singing glory. Oh, there to my heart was the blood. We're singing glory. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus, He about there at the cross where He took me in. Singing glory. Oh, we're singing glory. We're singing glory. Glory to all oh, there to my heart was the blood. Oh, we're singing glory. Verse number three. Oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. Oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have. I have entered in. That Jesus saves. And he keeps me clean. You ought to look at the heaven and say, Glory. We're singing, Lord. All that too. We're singing, glory. Last verse. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. 
Cast our poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge it today and be made complete. Singing, oh, 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 oh we're singing. Singing, go. There to head to my heart. We're singing, go. We're singing glory, glory to His name. With that too, was a blood of wine. We're singing glory. Come on, I'll feel some turning. Oh, oh, oh singing glory. I wish I could sing it like I feel it. Glory to. Oh, his name on oh, that too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that too. That too, my rights of blood. Oh, that too. Yeah. I said, that too, my heart. I'm so grateful for the blood. On oh, that to my heart was the blood. On oh, that to my heart, it was the blood that saved me. Oh, singing, glory. Come on, I dare you to give glory to his name. It was the cup of the blood. Glory. Somebody shout glory, 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 we need your glory, come on clap your hands if you want his glory, I said clap your hands if you want his glory, clap your hands if you need his glory, we need your glory, yeah, glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's share it for a moment. Glory. 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 Glory to his name. Let us receive our bishop as he comes. Bishop Brandon Terrell Whitehurst. Come on, clap your hands for him. Hallelujah. Come on, let's continue to give God glory and to give God praise. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I tell you, you're tuned in to the right station at the right time. And I want you to go ahead and share this broadcast. However, you may be watching us this morning uh, via social media. Uh, also, be sure to like, like it. And we also want you to uh, go ahead and grab the Word of God. Get it close and near you. We're not going to tarry long today, but there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of you who are at home, just touch your spouse or whoever's there with you. Tell them we made it one more week. Come on. Don't play with it. Tell them we made it one more week. Hallelujah. Come on. Anybody grateful for one more week? Come on. We ain't made it to the end of the year. But I am grateful for one more week. Come on, it could have been me. Outdoors, no food, no shelter, but somehow I'm still here. And we thank God. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb of God. He takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. If it had not been for Jesus, somebody said, tell me, where would I be? Hallelujah, hallelujah. I know I would be lost. Hallelujah. But I thank God that I found him just in time. 
Anybody glad you know who Jesus is? Come on, don't play with me now. You're glad you know who Jesus is. Come on, he's my bridge over troubled water. I said he's my shelter in the time of storm. Are you glad you know who he is? Come on, if you know who God is, you ought to show some signs. Ain't nobody here but me, but pull your hands up and say, God, I thank you that I know who you are. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We, we thank God for his many manifold blessings. And because of that, we want to honor our graduates for the year of 2020. Amen. God has blessed them to achieve another milestone. And uh, although we have not been able to physically share together, uh, all of you should have received something from our church family uh, this week. Those who are graduates, we are uh, sincerely proud of you and all of your accomplishments. And we just wanted to show a token of our love and want to push you to keep going forward. Amen. And because of that, we have just a short presentation this morning that we want to share uh, with you, highlighting our graduates and everything they have done. For certainly I stand here this morning as a proud pastor that we have people that are making a, an effect in the classroom. Amen. And so at this time, we're going to uh, acquiesce. Uh, and we're going to allow our media team to take over this time. Hallelujah. Jaden Bivens. Jaden Bivens is the son of Boyce Bivens and Charlize Smith. He is the grandson of Audrey Mills. Jaden is being promoted to the seventh grade and will be leaving Drayton Mills Elementary for McCracken Middle School. Jaden participated in the National Junior Bader Club and was on the A honor roll for the entire school year. Talia M. Griffin. Talia Griffin is the daughter of Terrell Pilgrim and Talisha Hammer. Talia is being promoted to the seventh grade and will be leaving Robert E. Cashin Elementary for Beck Academy Middle School. Talia has exceeded in math, social studies, and science and was on the AB Honor Roll. She dances for Imani African School of Dance. Ramaya Nicole Canada. Ramaya Nicole Canada is the daughter of Michael and Latasha Canada. Ramaya is being promoted to the ninth grade and will be leaving Rainbow Lake Middle School for Boiling Springs ninth grade campus. Ramaya had a GPA of 3.75. She participated in Honors English, Honors Algebra One, Beta Club, Citizen School Program, and Release Time, a Bible study class. Taylor Collins. Taylor Collins is the daughter of Thomas and Felicia Collins. Taylor is being promoted to the ninth grade and will be leaving Rainbow Lake Middle School for Boiling Springs ninth grade campus. Taylor had a GPA of 3.0 and participated in extracurricular volleyball. Isaiah Simmons. Isaiah Simmons is the son of Ayana Simmons. He has been promoted to the ninth grade and will be leaving Dawkins Middle School for Dorman Freshman Campus. Isaiah was on the AB Honor Roll. Isaiah participated in the Beta Club, Chorus, Band, Dorman Wrestling Team C, and was a goalie for Dorman Soccer C Team. Alana Cheyenne Smith. Alana Cheyenne Smith is the daughter of Jamel Kelly and Latima Smith. Alana is being promoted to the ninth grade and will be leaving Dawkins Middle School for Dorman Freshman Camp Academy. She participated in Chambers Orchestra, Arts Vision, and cheerleading and was an A student. Trinity Brown. 
Trinity Brown is the daughter of Sharon and Carletta Brown. Trinity is a graduate of Dorman High School. She was a member of the National Honor Society, Beta Club, and National Te Technical Honor Society. She was involved in various clubs, the African American Awareness Club, GEMS Club, Girls Empowered, Motivated, and Successful, Medical Society, and the Interact Club. Trinity was able to maintain a 4.2 GPA along with receiving a few scholarships. She will be attending Winston-Salem State University in North Carolina this fall, pursuing a BSN in nursing. She wants to become a needle natal nurse and then a physician assistant. Trinity's favorite scripture is Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Rakeem J. Mekelson. Rakeem J. Mekelson is the son of Ricky Mekelson and Latima Smith. Rakeem graduated from the University of South Carolina Upstate with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Business in Supply Chain Management. Stavana McKenzie Jeter. Stavanza McKenzie Jeter is the daughter of Stephen and Elaine Jeter. She is the goddaughter of Deacon Dennis Thompson and Carolyn Thompson. Stavana graduated magna cum laude from South Carolina State University School of Graduate Studies with a Master's of Arts degree in Speech Language Pathology and Audiology with a GPA of 3.73 out of 4.0. Savanna passed her licensing exam prior to graduating. On behalf of Bishop Brandon T. Whitehurst, Lady Whitehurst, and the Faith Tabernacle Church family, we congratulate each of you, and may God bless you. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate our graduates this morning? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I know I can't hear your hand claps and praises, but let's give glory to God. All of our children are not in jail. All of them are not in trouble. Come on, can we thank God that he still has his hand on our children? Come on. Thank God like it's your child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I also want to interject this morning. We have been in this mode of worship, virtual worship, for quite some time. And uh, none of this would have been possible if it were not for three particular people that have been here every Sunday. Uh, Sister Meredith, Deacon Thompson, and Deacon Hawkins. I want y'all at home. They can't hear you, but let's celebrate them. Amen. They have been working tirelessly. They're here before we get here. They're here when we leave. Certainly, uh, all of this is not a one-man effort, but it takes a team, and certainly a team has got us to where we are, and um, I believe we just found our new church announcer, Sister Merritt, have done such a, a wonderful job, amen, uh, doing that, and we are, I'm just grateful we have gifted and talented people uh, here on the corner of Howard and Sullivan. Listen, I'm not going to talk too long. I've been on Start Crying. Let us look now uh, for our Tyler's Confession. Amen. Our tithes confession for those of you who are giving today. Uh, as we bring our tithes and offerings unto the Lord, we are believing for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, growth in business, settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, bills decrease and blessings and increase thank you lord for meeting all of my financial needs that i may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of god and to promote the gospel of jesus christ if you believe it i dare you to go ahead and pull out that smartphone or device pull up givelify go ahead and give god that what belongs to him he only wants 10 percent, and i believe that he's very well worthy of it amen if you're giving today we encourage you you can go on our face our our website and also give there or if you want to mail your tithes in to here to the church 1025 howard street that's spartanburg south carolina 29303 we've been doing a great job our bills are paid we're still expanding so i thank god 
for those who are disciples amen not members but disciples hallelujah uh, but let us give it this time makes no difference what you're going through you're gonna make it God's gonna see you through hold your head up put a smile on your face this is another test it won't last always get ready for your blessing get ready for your miracle get ready get ready for your blessing get ready now for your miracle I know you've been hurting deep down inside you're gonna make it it's gonna be all right trials and trouble only last always but this is another text it will last always get ready for your blessing get ready for your miracle get ready for your blessing Get ready for your miracle. Father, we thank you for these tithes and offerings that have been used, that have been given. Father, we pray that you be used, they'll be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God's kind of blessing. God's kind of Say God's kind of blessing. God's kind of blessing. Come on, let's do it one time. Say God's kind of blessing. God's kind of blessing. Say God's kind of blessing. Here we go. Say God's kind of blessing. God's kind of blessing. God's kind of blessing. With my name on. With my name on. God's kind of blessing. God's kind of blessing. God's kind of blessing. With my name on it. God's kind of blessing. God's kind of blessing. God's kind of blessing. Put my name on. Put my name on. God's kind of blessing. Say God's kind of blessing. Say God's kind of blessing. Put my name on it. 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 Hallelujah. How many of you believe God's got something in store for you today? Hallelujah.
Come on, let's do it again. Come on, let's tell us, say there. Let's do it again. Say, there is. There is no one. Come on, tell them. Say, I can go. can't make it without him hallelujah come on some of us know we wouldn't be where we are had it not been for Jehovah Jireh our provider come on we would not be in our right mind had it not been for God sustaining us when we couldn't sustain ourselves come on anybody know you really couldn't make it without God I mean you tried everybody you tried a little bit of everything but at the end of the day, there's still nobody who's greater than our God. I'm sorry, I'm just a little fool right now. Because I know, I know that if it had not been for God, 
Come on, if it had not been for God, he's keeping the lights on. He's keeping a roof over my head. He's keeping food on my table. Come on, there is no way. I said there is no way. Hey, oh, there is. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Nobody greater than Jesus himself there is. Oh. When you look around, it was nobody but Jesus say there is. He healed my body and he told me to run out. Say there is. Come on now, let heaven heal you. Come on, let heaven heal you. Come on, while you're in your bedroom, on your sofa. Come on, throw up those holy hands and make the devil mad. Come on, let heaven hear you. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. Come on, he's inhabiting your praise right now. If you can't do nothing else but say, thank you, Lord. If you can't do nothing else but say, God, you've been good to me. You made a way out of no way. Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, I can't make it without you. I can't make it without you. Because it's in you I live. And I move. And I have my being. I can't make it without you. Yeah. Yeah. You've been good to me, Jesus. You've been good to me, Jesus. I can't make it without you. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can't make it without you. COVID-19. We can't make it without you. Why you in the land? Protest every day. But oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord, we can't make it without you. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said, I can't make it without you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 The 100 Psalm. Psalm 100. We need you, Jesus. The 100 Psalm. We need you, Jesus. Mm. Psalm 100. Those of you that have your Bibles. Hallelujah. We need 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what's going on at your house, but I know what's going on here. Psalm 100. He's just that kind of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes I think about all of the people that have disappointed me in my life. But one thing I can say about God is he hadn't let me down yet. Oh no. And that's enough to give him glory this morning. He hadn't given me everything I wanted. Don't confuse me. But he hadn't let me down. Hallelujah. And I need somebody that can say, I thank God that I serve a God who hadn't let me down. I hadn't had to worry about how he was going to come through, the way he was going to come through. But every time I turn around, one thing he did, he came through. <laughs> I said every time I turned around, he came through. When I wasn't looking for him, he came through. 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 I'm going to try to get through this. I only need about 20 minutes. Psalm 100, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I tell you what, a wind is going to blow through here, but you need to be connected. I ain't no need to plan with it. I said a wind is going to blow through here, but you better be connected. I said you better be connected to the right power source. Hallelujah. Brandon, I'm going to give them 30 seconds. I want y'all to go ahead and give it to them real hard. Just give them 30 seconds. Go ahead and get the edge off of you. Go ahead and get it off. I say get off your head. what happens when God has kept you for 12 weeks during the coronavirus. He's keeping me. It's <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I 
I promise you it's not me. Right. You know, we're doing Psalm 100 today. It says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God, and it is he that has made us. And we are his people. We are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. The Bible says, give thanks unto him and bless his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness is to all generations. I want to preach for a little while. And that maybe that's why we're in this vein. But if you're at home, I dare you to reach over and touch somebody and tell them you got to shout it out. Come on, tell them you got to shout it out. That's what I'm talking about today. You got to shout it out. If you don't know by now. Hallelujah. Shout it out. Shout it out. Some of y'all ain't never moved all your life. Glory to God. Glory to God. If I don't get started, it won't happen. So I'm trying to be proactive. Hallelujah. 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 But when you can't do nothing else, <laughs> when you don't have the words, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 say initially I struggled with the inception of this message only because in the past weeks in our country there has been a tone of outrage and frustration particularly as an African American one cannot but help to feel some type of way to constantly see the harsh treatment of our brothers and sisters. And I believe that even because of that outrage and frustration, there are many who has taken to the streets to let their voices be heard. They have 
protested and even during the course of this week, tragedy has once again struck in Atlanta, Georgia. And this is a very sobering message this morning because I don't know if you feel the way I do, and frankly, it really doesn't matter, but it comes down to the point to where my mother had a saying that can say that sometimes enough is enough. And even to witness politicians that will go and stand in front of a church to wave a Bible only to try to coerce some form of manipulation or possibly even a calming sensation that only made things worse instead of them getting better. I believe that there is a problem uh, from politicians all the way to police. Not all of them, but a lot of them have caused this unnerving, unwanted feeling of stress and anxiety. And I know many of you that are watching this morning say, well, Bishop, I didn't get on here to hear that. Well, you need to hear it. Because if you're living in this country, these are the things that are on the forefront of our nation's mind. And I believe this morning that for a lot of times there have been some of us who have been quiet, but although it just came to fruition, but there has been many years, Christine, that all of us up until the witnessing of George Floyd have too said that we cannot breathe. I want to talk to those who have went to school, got an education. You were qualified for the job, but still denied, not because you did not meet the qualifications, but because someone didn't like the way you look. You can't breathe. Those of you who have tried to get ahead in life, trying to do the right thing, coming home early, not staying out late, you have changed your patterns, you've changed your crowd, but it still seems as if the good that you're trying to do seems as if it's not getting you nowhere at all. You can't breathe. I, 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 I want to talk to those individuals this morning who, who have said, Bishop, it has, it has been on the forefront of my mind. It has been in my conscious and my subconscious to where I'm thinking now here will I will I be able to go out of my house and come back without anything happening to me and I, I just want to plead my case this morning because I believe that if if it has not crossed your mind in the words of my grandfather just keep on living because whether it may not happen to you directly or indirectly if you have any type of God on the inside of you, there is no way you can stand on the sidelines and witness injustice and not feel any type of way. I believe here that, that such is the same when we talk about our God. Uh, we, we, we are frustrated. We don't know what to do. There are individuals who are now going to buy weapons that ain't never owned a, a gun before in their life. They buy an ammunition. They're stocking up because they don't know what may happen this time next year. And I, I want to submit to you that before you go off the deep end, take a look at Psalm 100. Before, before you allow yourself to to become complacent in anger and, and bitterness. I believe that if you are a child of God, you can find some type of a witness to, 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 to the question you may have been asking. What do I do in the midst of all of this? 
I protested, but ain't nothing happened in Jacoby. I, I've, I've written letters to city and state and national uh, elected officials, but nothing is still happening. And so as a child of God, what is, what is my, what is my due diligence? And I believe that if you ask that question this morning, I would like to introduce it by letting you know that I'm going to tell you something contrary to what you've always been told. Uh, many of us were brought up under the assumption that, that, that uh, when, you, when, you, when you go into certain places and when you visit other people's houses, you don't act the same way at your house that you do at everybody else's. You know, I, I was always told that uh, to, uh, we would have a briefing we would have a briefing Elder Spurgeon before we left the house and mama would tell us that uh, when we go over here don't you ask for nothing to eat I've already fed you. you you don't touch nothing because it don't belong to you 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 be manable yes ma'am and no ma'am yes sir and no sir and uh, you don't be running through these people house either you get somewhere and sit down like you got some home training and uh, and once you do that you 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 make sure you use your inside voice I never knew what inside voice was until I went to elementary school to and we would have to line up in K-5 and I don't know how y'all did it but the teacher would line us up in kindergarten and we had to take our finger and put it over our mouth and uh, if we talked she would make us start all over again and the person, whoever was the quietest, they would become what they called the line leader. Y'all don't know nothing about that. The line, everybody wanted to be the line leader. That means you were the first one. You was leading the pack from, from the classroom to the cafeteria, from the classroom to the, to the library. You was the line leader. And everybody wanted to at least be the line leader one time during the course of the school year. But the only way to get there is if you exemplified that you knew how to follow the rules. And I want to submit to you uh, this morning, beloved, that, that I'm, I'm introducing something to you that, that kind of suggests that you break the rules now. <laughs> because uh, this psalm suggests that, that not only, not only, this is not, the, this is not the time for us to keep our voices down. This is not the time for us to keep it under control. This is not the time for us to say, don't raise, uh, don't raise, don't raise, yeah. <laughs> this is not the time for, for us to, to say, it idly by and to keep our mouth shut uh, but yet it's time for us to do the contrary uh, what do you mean by that pastor are you telling us that we should go out in the streets now I'm talking about God uh, when it comes down to us worshiping our God uh, Psalms 100 claims for us uh, that it's very appropriate uh, to raise the praise uh, uh, people now the young people now they, they got a slogan say they gonna turn up and uh, you know turn up can mean a whole lot lot of things to a whole lot of people you know that can mean you yeah yeah I, 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 I don't want to go into that but but yeah turn up and so however you define that slogan or that phrase now is the time for you to turn up the volume if you've been living silently and thinking to myself I've been depressed since this virus hit I hadn't had any type of peace I hadn't been able to sleep at night I hadn't had an appetite I've been worried my mind is racing while I'm trying to while I'm trying to go to bed my mind is racing as I go throughout the, the, the various chores of the day and I want to submit to you that if you find yourself with this testimony of you can't seem to find no kinds of normalcy you can't find no kind of place to feel secure no kind of peace within now is time for you to turn up your praise and I know many of you may not hear that because you're saying pastor what is praise going to get me when I can't pay my bills what is praise going to get me when I'm suffering with anxiety what is praise going to get me when I'm cracking up because I'm tired of looking at myself I'm tired of looking at everybody else around me I'm just tired of being sick and tired y'all ain't gotta say man I feel God now what is praise going 
going to get me? When I'm sitting here wondering what my next move needs to be. What is praise going to get me? When I've been laying prostrate on the altar before God. And I've been praying the same prayer for seven years. And still hadn't seen any results in my life. What is praise going to get me? When I just got a bad report from the doctor. I've been diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. It's spreading throughout my body. It's done went in my lymph nodes. It's down in my lungs. It's done went to my prostate. What is praise going to get me? When I just took my mother to the grave. I just put my father in ICU. What is praise going to get me? When I just got laid off my job. My children just got locked up. What is praise going to get me? I came to tell you this morning. What praise is going to get you? It's going to cause the hand of the enemy to have to retract his hand off of your life. Because what praise does, it summons his God. And what we are created to do, the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. You ain't got to call 911. You ain't got to call 411. All you got to do is open up your mouth and say, God, I need I see I'm riding this ship by myself. And so here it is. I want to talk to the person that's saying, what is praise going to get me? Oh, my God. And so here it is in Psalm 100. We are inclined. We are called to shout it out. And the first reason we're called to shout it out is because it means we recognize who God is. Mm, my, my, my. Uh, what does it mean to recognize who God is? Yes. Uh, I, 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 I've been, I've been learning more and more about myself during the course of this pandemic. Uh, you know, we now have to wear masks. Uh, at least we're supposed to. We, we're supposed to wear a mask everywhere we go. And, uh, you know, I, I normally do pretty good. Uh, Sister Ferguson, when it comes down to recognizing people, but I had a particular person, I won't call their name, they're probably watching because it's one of my friends, but I had a particular person that came, I was, I was the clerk for the polls on Tuesday, I hope y'all went and voted, whether it was a public or primary or not, you should have voted, but anyway, uh, because of this reality here, it, I, I went and I was doing my clerk duties at the poll, and uh, she walked up to me and she said, uh, uh, are you Brandon Whitehurst? I said, mm hmm, yeah. She said, uh, You don't recognize me. I said, No. I said, Well, I'm afraid I don't. Because it's hard to recognize someone who's looking something like this. All I can see is your eyes. Talking to you is muffled. It sounds like this. And so I can't even hear the real tone of your voice. Hallelujah. Because you have something that's muffling the sound that's coming out of your mouth. Y'all didn't want to pray with me here this morning. I, I can't even see your mouth because there's something that's covering the, the portal by which you communicate. And I want to submit to you that I know we have to wear masks during COVID-19. But I submit to you in this next season of your life. Don't you allow a mask. Oh, I can't hear nobody. Don't you allow a mask to cover the portal of your praise. Because you may don't have the strength of a teenager. You may got Uncle Arthur. You may got all of his cousins too. But one thing that you do still have. You still have teeth and tongue. And as long as you got a mouth. I dare you to open up your mouth. So God can recognize who you is. 
I wish I had a witness now. Let me do station identification. When is the last time God heard from you? When is the last time you said thank you Jesus? When is the last time you lifted up your mouth and said God I don't need none from you. I don't need a new car. I don't need a new husband. I don't need a new wife. But God I just want to tell you thank you. Thank you for giving me the activity of my limbs. Thank you for putting clapping in my hands. Running in my feet. Joy in my heart. Can God recognize you? But most importantly, can you recognize God? See, here's the thing. Some of us, we recognize that check that hits every two weeks. But you ain't recognizing the source of that direct deposit. I can't hear nobody. We recognize that, yeah, my blood pressure been good, Bishop. I know it has. But you are crediting it to all these pills you've taken. The devil is a liar. God has a way of speaking to hypotension and hypertension and causing those things to... I wish I had a witness here. The problem is, who have you recognized during the course of this pandemic that has been your source when everything else looked a little shaky? Because there are some people that are working jobs where they start saying, we got to lay all off again. We opened up too early. We got to send y'all back home. We only going to work the first shift and the second shift. Well, what about third? Can't hear nobody. Uh, yeah. And so what it is, who have you recognized as the source of everything that has kept you afloat during the midst of this pandemic? I know I'm preaching to somebody. And this is the reason why Psalm 100, he tells us, he says, you got to make a joyful noise, not to your boss man, not to the doctor, but he says to the Lord. But here's the other part. Worship the Lord with gladness and come into his presence with singing. Now, I thought about this when I was at home because not only do we really recognize who God is, we got to realize that also that serving God replaces misery and joy. Now, let's take them to a Christian to understand this here. You know, serving God, it, 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 it replaces your misery because there's been many times I've, I've drove up 85 in a bad mood. Can't hear nobody talking here. There's been many times where I just woke up not feeling it. You, you know, sometimes you had them days. You, ain't nobody done nothing to you. You just, it, it's just on you. You, you know, you, 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 you. I wish I had somebody know what I'm talking about. Bishop, I, you talking to me because I'm one of them people. Yeah, talk back to me because you know what I'm talking about. It, it ain't that somebody done made you mad. It ain't that, that you broke. Or that, no, it ain't none of that. You just, you, you just being you. You just in your, you just one of your ways. You, you got about five personalities. This is number three you on the day. I mean, just be honest with that. Yeah, yeah. So you know you and those people that know you, they know how you are. If they see you looking crazy, yeah, she on number two today. Don't say nothing to her. But yeah, in the morning, good morning. Yeah, she's on number one. Yeah, we can hug him today. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to know who you with. And because of that, I realized that there have been times where I didn't feel like it, Brandon. There's been times where I didn't want to feel like it. But when I get in the house of God, it's something that happens when you start serving God despite how you may feel despite what may be going on around you when you serve God God will lift that heaviness and give you joy God will lift that depression and give you peace can you recognize who God is I'm almost done I'm almost done I'm almost done so it's because of this, he says, make a joy. He says, worship the Lord with gladness and come into his presence. See, yeah, that means your attitude needs to have something good about it. Yeah. They say singing refreshes the soul. You know, even people that can't sing, you hear them singing in the shower. You know, you, 
Everybody knows some of trouble in my way. You know, you say, Lord bless them. They ain't got no tune, no rhythm. But when they're good move, even the worst singer try to sing. You ever seen a man try to sing to a woman that can't sing, but he love her so much, he'll go from a C sharp to an A minor. Come on here and talk to me. I mean, he just giving it the best he got. See, something about singing, it, it implies that you're in a good mood. You, you have a good tone about you. That's why he says, worship the Lord with singing. Change your disposition. You got to have an understanding here that God ain't done nothing to you. He don't deserve your attitude and your flakiness. But God ain't been nothing but good to you. And because God is just that kind of God, he deserves the right response. You know, sometimes a person's attitude will make you keep money in your pocket. <laughs> you ever, you know, God sometimes will lay it on your heart to bless somebody. But because when you go to do it, they just so nasty. Mm, and you're saying, you know, I don't really need it. I was trying to help you, but since you were, I'm going to keep all of this right here in my pocket. And I'm going to sit here and look at you and watch you be hungry. Yeah. yeah, Bishop, you know, I sure have done it. And if I keep living, I may do it again because uh, you, 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 how, how do you want me to, to, to freely give? And you just got a nasty, you just nasty. You, you, your, your, your mama was nasty. Your grandmama was nasty. You great, you need to break that curse off of your life and, and get yourself together. You, you got to understand your attitude can cause doors to shut. So here it is. Verse number three, and I'm done, I'm done. He says, know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us, and we are his, H-I-S, all right? We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Here's the second thing that you need to understand is that you need to shout it out because you have a relationship that does not waver. You've got a relationship that does not waver. What do you mean by that, White Hurst? Uh, this psalm, if you notice something, uh, every theologian that I try to consult by way of commentary, etc., articles, they all uh, were very poignant in pointing out that these verbs that we see in the first few verses here, they are words of action. They are... They are they are words of action, and, and one that particularly stands out is the first word in verse 3. It says, no. It says to no. Now, now I know I may have some children watching, but it's okay. Uh, we've got to understand that when we talk about the word to know, uh, it suggests the kind of knowing that happens between a man and a woman that are married. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Glory to God. Yeah, yeah. You got to have a license for this type of no. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. You, you, you got to have some type of license. You know, I, I've told y'all before, everything you do, you got to have a license for. You, you got to have a license to fish. You got to have a license to drive. Come on here and talk back to me. You, you got to have a license to practice law. You got to have a license to practice medicine. And so this, this license is the one for a man and a woman. And because he, he's talking about knowing in that sense, uh, it suggests to us uh, that we, we don't need to just know God intellectually uh, but now we've got to move to a knowing God intimately uh, because there are many of you that can come to church uh, and you can quote John 3.16 uh, there are many of you that can come to church uh, and you can quote the 23rd Psalm uh, there are many of you that can come to church uh, and you can quote the 100th Psalm uh, but yet that's a part of intellectualism uh, but I want to talk to those who can say I know God intimately that means we've cried some night. I've cried until I had tears for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I know God intimately because God was the only one that could clear up my eyes. God was the only one that after I went through that breakup that almost caused me to break down, God was the only one that caused me to pull myself together and look myself in the mirror and say, everything that God made he made it well God was the only one who caused me to realize that things are not as bad as they
may seem, but they're working together for the good of them that love him. In other words, do you intimately know who God is? The old saint said, if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know he could solve them. If I'd never been sick, I wouldn't know he's a healer. I want to talk to some people via Facebook Live and on YouTube this morning. They're going to say, Bishop, I know God intimately. I'm not talking about a one-night stand, but I'm talking about I know God. I talk to him in the morning. I talk to him around noon. I talk to him when they make me mad at work. I talk to him when my children are getting on my nerves. I talk to him when there's problems in the community. I talk to God. And because I talk to him, we've got a relationship that can't be broken. I wish somebody say, I know God intimately. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Verse 4 says you got to end his gates with thanksgiving. Not only that, Rivers, he says you got to end his courts with praise. And then he says give thanks to him and bless his name. Not only do you understand the relationship that doesn't waver. Here's, here's why the relationship doesn't waver. It's because you don't pick God up and put him down where you want to. Y'all didn't see that, did you? It's right there in the text. It's in the text. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. It don't say bless his name on Monday. It doesn't say bless his name only when you're at church. It doesn't say bless his name only when you're in Life Institute. It doesn't say bless his name when there's a miracle that has happened. It says bless his name, period. Y'all trying to be difficult this morning. In other words, he's saying praise is not stationary, but you take praise wherever you go. I, I remember back, uh, uh, Golden, you probably remember Spurgeon, you too. Back when I first uh, got a license, we had a group that used to run together. It'd be about seven or eight of us. And uh, me, Pastor Jeffrey Williams, and some others, but we all would beat Johnny Sizemore. We would all be in the car. And I remember one specific time, Johnny Sizemore had a Mazda 626 it was silver I believe or it may have been dark but y'all don't remember Mazda 626 do you he had a Mazda 626 we drove that thing you would have thought we went from South Carolina to New York every week but we would pack up in that car and in Hezekiah Walker had something called a praise break I wish I had a witness here and that praise break would come on in that car and it just so happened we would get so happy Minister Williams that we would be going down 85 and we'll pull that Mazda 626 uh, on the side of the road uh, and we'll get out the car and go to giving God praise uh, and people say what is going on with these children uh, but something about when the more you start thinking uh, about just how good God has been uh, dangers he's delivered you from uh, seen and unseen uh, you will pull over on the side of the road uh, and say up oh, I just thought about you, I just thought about something else. And I know some of y'all may think I'm crazy. Because you ain't never done that before. But I praise God in ICU rooms. I praise God at the mortuary. If you invite me to your house, I'll dance in your living room floor. Because praise is not what I do. But praise is who I am. I gotta quit. I think I don't gonna have y'all for own sermon. You gotta realize here, when you go to work, you ain't gotta do a two-step. But if you don't do nothing but wave your hand and say, God, I thank you. You praising Jesus. The next time the devil is on your trail, I dare you to plead the blood and say, Satan. The Lord Jesus rebuke you and give God glory. Here's the third thing, and I got to get out of here. Here's the third thing. I'm over my time. I'm on my time. I'm on my time. Uh, someone say, well, Pastor, why is it that we should praise God everywhere we go? Because last time I checked, last time I checked, uh, last time I checked, I believe my ethics professor 
Dr. Diego would agree with me that uh, it is the job of creation to praise the creator. Mm. Mm. Your mom and daddy didn't create you. Uh, they just participate in the process. But creation began with, with our Lord and Savior. It began with God back in Genesis 1 and 1 where he took the dirt. He took dirt and he shaped it and he breathed into us the breath of life. Oh, glory to God. I wish I had some help in here. It started with him. And so, therefore, when I realized that, that I didn't make me, I, I'm, not, I'm not a product of my own success, but I'm living off of, off of the success of the one who allowed me to be who I am. I had some help here. You got to understand here that I can never get to a place to where I'm exalted above the creator. It's the same type of fence that a parent takes when your child want to talk out their mouth sideways. That's now I understand why mama said, I, boy, I brought you in. And I tell you, whoa, good God am I. I could see a shoe coming right now. I wish I had a witness here. It was anything she could find. It's, it's, a, it's another type of disrespect when a person has clothed you for 18 years. They done fed you for 18 years. Come on, talk back to me. And you got the, you got the nerve, the, the audacity, the unmitigated gall to, to talk to me like that. I stayed up with you when you had chicken pox. Come on here and talk back to me. You, you had a fever that would not break, but I remembered some of grandmama's old remedies and, and got some potatoes and put them in your socks. And I can't hear nobody talk. Took some lemons and some onions and boiled them on a, on a stove and made you a concoction to break that fever. I was the one that, that wiped your tears and wiped your behind when you couldn't do it. And you got the nerve. Put yourself in the place of the creator. And so I'm in my seat when I tell y'all this. He says, he closes out, Jacoby, in verse 5. He says, uh, Spurgeon, we eating at your house today. He closes out in verse 5. He says, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to, to, I wish I had a church here, to all generations. Beloved, I would be remiss if I walked away from this text without doing it one last truth. I believe that the first thing, for those of you who fail to take notes, you should shout it out because you recognize who he is. Secondly, you should shout it out. Because you've got a relationship that does not waver. But thirdly, you need to shout it out because God's goodness is the reason for it all. I believe that uh, if I had to find an airline to book this ticket, my Lord, I'm, I don't believe this morning. Uh, that I call Delta mm, Greg on because uh, their round trip flight is a little above my budget. Have I got a witness? I don't believe I'll call American Airlines because the last time me and Miss Whitehurst had a flight with them, they lost our luggage. Baby, do you remember that? I don't believe. I said, I don't believe that I'll call Spirit Airlines because they got all kind of spirits, but it just ain't got the right one. Can y'all hear me here? I don't believe. I'll call JetBlue. Oh, shucks. I won't call JetBlue because their prices are not in my time frame. But I believe that I'm going to call Heaven's Airline because gone, he's always, he's got room for me, not in economy, not in business, but in first class. Have I got a witness? Somebody said, well, Whitehurst, 
how is it that God's goodness is the reason for it all I'm going to tell you why because you got to understand that the word tov in the Hebrew it means good but this word it has a semantic range because God's goodness is seen throughout his relationship with his people I can't hear nobody I want to submit to you that the reason God's goodness is different because God is the type of goodness to where he treats all children the same way he's not like that step parent that don't like step children but God is the father that treats every child as it was his his own and I wish I had a witness that can say I I'm so not worthy of all God has done. I'm not worthy of God's goodness. I'm I'm, I'm not worthy for how he keeps blessing me. I'm not worthy of how God healed my body. I said I'm not worthy. The reason why I'm not worthy is because the end clause of verse 5 says that his love endures forever y'all know what that means don't you that means even when I fall down his love endures forever even if I find myself like the prodigal son and walk away his love endures forever and his faithfulness is to all generations if he wasn't good to just my grandmother he just wasn't good unto my mother but he's a God that's even good to me have I got a witness here God's goodness lets me know I got one more word for you that he's reliable I wish I had help in here you watch commercials don't you I said like a good neighbor State Farm is there all states says that you're in good hands with them but has anybody tried Jesus if you try Jesus God is reliable how do you know it because late last night he laid me down but early this morning he stopped by my house he's reliable when I got in the car I didn't break down but I got here safely He's reliable. Is there anybody that's listening to me that can say his mercy is everlasting? His truth to all generations. I gotta quit. But if you don't remember anything I say, you gotta remember that Charles Spurgeon he said as long as we are receivers of mercy we must be givers of thanks I said as long as we are receivers of mercy we've got to be givers of thanks well can I ask you a question has God been merciful to you has God shown mercy to you has God shown grace to you has God open doors no man could open has God made a way out of no way has God done the impossible if God's done it you've got a response you've got to give God thanks how do I thank him I lift my hands open my mouth and say thank you Lord thank you Lord you've been there you walking with me you're talking with me ain't nobody here and you're telling me I am his own somebody need to be thankful because if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side where would you be I'd be dead sleeping in my grave thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. Anybody watching this morning, 
said to say, I'm going to shout it out. Tell the world, tell the world that Jesus is a good God. He's merciful. He's gracious. He's loving. He's everlasting. I'm done. I'm done. Listen. I don't know what's going to happen this week. I don't know how it's going to happen or who it's going to happen to. But before you get to your lowest, shout it out. It's not even just a tangible, it's not even a physical dance. It's, it's on the inside. It's about you recognizing that despite how bad this stuff may be, I know my Redeemer living because he lives on the inside of me. Hmm. Will you believe that I can do all things? And you may be watching today. Huh. And these three months have shown you more about yourself that you never knew. You didn't know you were that strong, did you? <laughs> you didn't know that you were that strong. But look at you. You still here? You in your right mind? Mm. I just want you to know you can do it. I don't know when we're going to come back in here. Don't even ask me that no more. Don't even ask me. Don't ask me. I don't know. They don't need nobody asking me that no more. I don't know when we're coming back. Ask God. But until we do, God's going to keep you where you need to be. He's going he's to he's cover you when you feel uncovered. I could win a soul. I wish I could sing it. But whoever I'm talking to today, I want you to be encouraged because there's nothing that can happen to you that God cannot handle. There's nothing that can happen that God cannot handle. And while we're in the season of waiting, learn how to wait on him. It's one thing to say it, but it's another thing to do it. Learn how to wait on him. Because serving God pays off. Serving God will pay off for you. It comes with a little testing. It comes with a little testing. I can do all things. That strengthens. That strengthens me. Come on, everybody can say that. Let's do that one more time. Oh, I can, I can, I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. Hallelujah. Oh, I can do all things through Christ. If you're not saved today, I can do the Bible says, if I believe in our heart, confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, thou shalt be saved. All you got to do is say, I admit that I'm a sinner. 
I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And I commit myself to being a child of God. It's easy as admitting, believing, and confessing. That's how easy it is. And if you've admitted today, and you believe that Jesus is Lord of your life, and if you committed yourself to his cause, I want to welcome you, my brother and sister, into the kingdom of God. That's one of the best decisions you've ever made in your life. And if you're coming into God's kingdom, find you a church home. You may not be here in South Carolina or even Spartanburg. It doesn't matter wherever you are. Find some place to cover you and pray for you. You need a church family. You need a pastor. And even if you desire prayer today, you can call us while we're here at the church. 764-1770. We have people here that are willing and able to pray for you and with you. Maybe you need to hear a voice. Something tangible. We are here. And we're willing to pray with you, my brother or my sister. That's 864-764-1770. We invite you to call if you need prayer. But maybe you've got something that's pressing on you. And you say, I don't, I don't have to call, but I can touch and agree right through the screen. And if that's you, I want you to type that prayer request in down at the bottom. If you need us to believe God with you for someone or something, just put it in the comments. If it's prayer for your brother, prayer for your family, put it in the comments. If it's prayer for our nation, put it in the comments. We want to pray together. We're still gathered. We're still gathered in his name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every viewer this morning. I thank you for every listener. Father, I pray right now, even for those who are here in this sanctuary. And God, I pray that you will release something supernatural. Something that the doctors can't explain. Something that science can't wrap its mind around. Father, I pray that you do something and defy the odds. To allow your children to see you more clearly now than they ever have before. God, I pray for protection. I pray for peace. I pray for prosperity. I pray for provision. Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever your children stand in the need of. Father, I pray if it be your will that you release it to them right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we know there's nothing too hard for you. Because you can do everything but fail. And so God right now, just as you've done it for the woman with the issue of blood, just as you've done it for J. Iris' daughter, Father, I pray right now that every place that was dry, God, Father, I pray you bring life to it. Every place that was desolate, Father, I pray, God, that it shall blossom again. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Father, I pray your choicest blessings upon these, your people. Father, even when the world says no, God, we know that your yes is greater than their no. And God, we thank you for being a God who looks beyond our faults, continues to see our needs. Now, Lord, touch every member of Faith Tabernacle Church. Father, let them feel the love, the comfort of your embrace. And Lord, as long as you're on the throne, <laughs> we know that heaven and earth shall pass away. But your word shall stand forever. So we thank you for everlasting word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I can do all things through Christ. Come on, while you're there watching on your living room sofa, I can do, I can do all things through Christ. One more time, come on. I can do, yes I can. Hey, 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 hey. I can, hey. Oh, 
whatever comes my way, God. That strength, that strength of me. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us all, henceforth, now, and forevermore. The people of God said, Amen. Remember, I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Until next week, God bless you. May heaven smile upon you as I pray. Oh, Lord, that's it,